Look at that. It's, you've even got the Nimbus logo on the cutlery. It's just so nice. You've got two bases here, which are clearly for a picnic table. You have serving platters, cutting boards, those sorts of things down here. You can have Kia Aura, guys. It's, uh, it's probably a very terrible attempt at uh, speaking Kiwi. Anyway, g'day, Dan Jones is my name and uh, welcome to New Zealand. Um, we're in the Marlborough Sounds, uh, up the north of the South Islands. Uh, beautiful, stunning place, just been for a drive. And I'm on the Nimbus C11. And in this video, uh, I'm gonna do a walkthrough from the front to the back of the boat. No, so actually we'll go from the back to the front since I'm here. Uh, I'm going to show you is, uh, you know, I guess together we're going to discover if this is a boat for weekending in all climates. Um, we've been on the T11, which is based on the same hull as this boat. If you're interested in a walkthrough of that boat, follow the link coming up in the uh, screen right now. That's the Epic Day boat. And this, from what I've just discovered and am continuing to discover, to discover with you, is the Epic Weekender or Holiday boat it, it really is and I don't know about you like are you thinking what I'm thinking but T11 Sydney surfboard rack C11 New Zealand ski rack that's just kind of what immediately I thought when I came into here and see the snow on top of the mountains so yeah um, this is the walkthrough let's start at the back of the boat as you can immediately see this boat's got inboards and I really do see a place for an inboard layout in a, in a scenario like this. Um, you've got all this extra real estate to use and enjoy. Um, you've got probably quite good range considering the fuel consumption we just discovered in the test drive video. If you're interested in a test drive of this uh, boat, follow the link coming up on the screen. It'll be there when I've edited it. So the other thing is you've got really great access to marina situations. Batches, I know a lot of you Kiwis have your own batches. Um, that means uh, a bachelor pad for those of you who don't know. Um, and if you've got a waterfront batch and you need to get off onto your dock, this is gonna be a great place to do it. And of course, fishing. So if you wanna use this back area uh, in a bit of a multifunctional way, that seems very logical as opposed to the outboards which might close off the transom for some of your fishing activities, which I know many of you are gonna be interested in a boat like this just from some occasional fishing um, so yeah let's start at the back of the boat um, we've got beautiful classic for all nimbuses really big thick rub rail um, going right the way around the boat so um, you've got one that finishes here and then the transom one um, it picks up at the marina dock level at the back of the boat so if you um, uh, you know reversed in and hit the corner you're going to protect it don't hit the middle though because then you'll hit the swim ladder which is um, well placed in the middle with an excellent amount of um, grab handle uh, facility with these two rails just here. So that is a three step stainless steel fold down swim ladder. This is some custom setup uh, for the owner. So don't worry too much about that. And then we see um, all real teak decks on this one. Um, absolutely gorgeous, I gotta say. Probably for the Aussies, I reckon we'd do teak out the back here and then no teak up on the bow. Um, but maybe uh, it's more practical down in a place like this. I don't know. I don't come to New Zealand enough to tell. Um, but immediately you can see the fender storage. It's just <sighs> the fine details with a Nimbus is one of the reasons why you would be attracted and enjoy and appreciate a Nimbus. Everywhere you go, they think about the operation of the boat, how you're going to operate it, and they think about the finer details. So we've got a beautiful fender rack, um, appropriately sized fenders, all neatly covered in their custom Nimbus covers and slotted in the back of the boat. The perfect place to grab them and deploy them up onto your rail just here and tie them in the appropriate spots. But you have options. So just here on both sides, we have one of these. Got a decent size gear locker. So this one has got the shore power in it. Um, I've just taken the second helm cover off and thrown it down there. Another really sensible use. So this is for all your lines. So they can all just be coiled up, 
and, and uh, hanged down in here as separately so everything's neat and tidy. I can see the gas storage just down there. Um, I think that would be the gas storage. Oh, actually, I'm not sure. Um, I can see the swim shower uh, goes in here, and that's a hot and cold one by the looks of the uh, the tap that goes to the end. But it, that might not be gas locker underneath it. I could be wrong, so don't hold me to that. Um, big stainless steel cleats, so we're going to see those as we make our way around the boat. And the kid and doggy door is a big, chunky, solid one. The, the, the quality of the stainless on all Nimbuses that I've been on so far is, is really second to none. So you, you, you come through this stainless steel grate, which has actually also got a, a, an integrated hinge, which goes into the engine bay, which we're gonna look at at the end of the video. So if you wanna see that, stay to the end. So that stops a bit, a bit of water coming into the cockpit. And then here we go, we come into the cockpit area just here, which is, all level in this part, but then you step down on either side to go to the side deck. So just be aware of that. And what do you got in terms of space and volume? This back seat here, can you see that there? Three, four people, I'd say, pretty comfortable on this. Um, you've got visibility forward, visibility through the glass door, which we'll have a look at in a sec. And you can, clearly put a lunch table just here. So it's gonna be a good, you know, for a couple or for mum and dad and the kids, I guess you would do director's chairs here and here if you were having an alfresco meal out here and then you can move it inside if it's, uh, if it's a bit cold. And I feel like here in New Zealand, like it is a little bit nippy. Um, you're probably gonna be eating in there from time to time as well. A um, Little bit of protection from the weather. So when you step out the door, this ledge just gives you about protection up to there. So if it was raining, you're gonna be uh, out of the weather. You've got a down light here and here and a grab rail with it, which is pretty easy to reach, which goes all the way around the, uh, the trailing edge just there. Another grab rail just here. And this would be an optional extra, but come in close and have a look at that. How cool is this guys? Um, we've got a full second helm station. I really like that as opposed to just having um, the remote controls that you see in a lot of boats today because you can do the full on rock star back into the marina from here. You can see everything in terms of seeing forward up the side and out to the back of the boat. And also just on a nice day, if you're putting around in like, let's face it, this is just God's country place like this. You could just sit out the back on a nice day with your partner, with your friends and just drive the boat from here in a relaxed manner and just converse with your buddies. Um, I, I just think that's fantastic. We've got everything. We've got thruster control, joystick, digital throttles just here. Um, that's the diagnostics display, uh, Volvo Penta, and we've got the Simrad and the power assisted steering just here as well, which is even adjustable. Like that's epic, love to see it. Um, so I think we're gonna go into the boat and have a look at the interior. Um, we're kind of rushing this today because um, my plane broke down and so we started a little bit late, later than we thought we were going to. Um, but another Nimbus, how good is this? Like, that's a boat hook. Love it. Awesome. With its own special little spot right where you need it. That is the sort of thing you see on these boats. So come in and let's soak up this interior. I'm just going to focus on this lounge area first. There's a lot going on which you, you might not realise when you first look at this space. So, um, yes, this is where you come when it's a little bit cold, but you're probably going to be happy no matter what the weather is doing because the visibility through these windows from all points is epic. Like uh, hopefully you, you're capturing all this, Ben, that the views are just amazing. You can um, just get yourself out of the wind like we have just now. That wind coming through the mountains, it's the middle of winter here. It, it's a little bit nippy. Um, and so this is a wonderful place to, to come and hang out. In terms of the options of how this area works, so this table folds like so. So we've got a grab handle just here. Um, when it's in the folded position, that will clearly spin around and it will also go up and down. So you can convert this all into a, what I would assume uh, is a bit of a day bed type situation. Um, we've also got it in the U-shaped seating set up at the moment. So if you see, hopefully you can see, there's a cushion just here. Actually, I'll sit on it. 
So I'm on this cushion right now, utilizing this area in the U-shaped setup, but it doesn't have to do this. We can actually, when we're driving, take what I believe is this cushion that I'm sitting on right now and put it just here. So if you just see this little ledge here and this little guy here, that pretty clearly matches up, I believe. I don't know for sure, but I believe that matches up to the ledges uh, on that cushion there. So that's gonna slot in here. You have a backrest, which definitely matches this backrest and slots in here. So picture this, driving to your batch in your beautiful destination. Everyone wants to face the direction of travel. Boom, set it up like so. Next step. This seat here will also hinge and go over here. You've got footrests for all the passengers. So you can have a row of people there, a row of people here, and then captain and a navigator enjoying these amazing sexy seats, which we will get to. Everybody's gonna have an incredibly enjoyable ride in changeable weather conditions. So that's, that's important and it's, you can understand why it's designed like that because this is a Swedish boat and the weather's a little bit dodgy in Sweden. So um, once we're in here, how does it feel? First thing that's worth noting, now pan down here a little bit so you catch all that, Ben, is the height. It's built for big Swedish blokes. Like the, you're, you're not gonna struggle with headroom in this boat. Um, if you're worried about the heat load coming through because you have one, two fixed windows and then you have two manually opening uh, skylights just there, but you can knock the heat out with these blinds. So don't worry about that. But you, you literally can enter the boat. You got one, two, three, four hooks here. You can hang up your jacket um, and then enter the boat and be all civilized. You can put your phones and empty your pockets in here. If people want to have a pocket each, they have one. Like they've literally thought of everything. Everything has a place. Then you've got a nice little reading spot over there in the corner over there with its own little reading light. We also have down lights above the table. A lot of boats forget about that. So down lights above the table, nighttime eating spot, sensible. Um, the door, actually, I'll just have a quick look. It's, it's a sliding door, but I did see, there we go. See that? You can just lock it half position. So if you just want to vent the cabin a little bit, but you don't want to have it completely open, can do. So I'm not finished. Um, when this seat is set up, you even have a footrest and it's a beautiful teak with stainless finished footrest. That thing is solid and gorgeous. Under here, huge big um, storage area, which we're going to have to cut to a shot off. So that's uh, not super easily accessed because you've got to move the cushions. So that's probably an area that you would store more long term or even extra life jackets, that sort of stuff. But we'll have a look and find that out a little bit later. Um, the flooring on this boat, it's got beautiful teak floor with the carpets over it. And now here's the next little nice thing I want to point out. So um, come forward, Ben, and we'll just try and point some of these things out. I want you to have a look at this. Just, just, I don't even need to say anything. Can you see that? Huh? How gorgeous is that? And one more, I want you to see this. Look at that. That's it. You've even got the Nimbus logo on the cutlery. It's just so nice. So, you, oh, awesome. Everything's got a place, super well finished. You know, we've got all our little pockets here with the Nimbus logo. Look, look at the stainless on this. That's just, mm, love it. So we've got more to talk about. So underneath, um, we'll have to cut to shots of that. We've got uh, foot rests for three people and more storage for bags underneath this seat accessible from the forward side. So just a, an opening ledge where you could throw a couple of bags in. Um, next thing I want to talk about is these doors. Like, they are really, really wide opening doors. You've got no problem getting in and out in terms of bumping your head or multiple people transiting in and out. So what, what's nice about this is someone could be hanging at the door having a chit chat um, and people can still pass from the side cabins and go down 
stairs if they wish. Like you, you do have a lot of usable area just here, which is um, kind of could be another social hangout zone at times, I feel. Um, anyway, but as you enter the cabin, you've got a nice teak step here with a Nimbus logo on it. That's got about a six inch um, sort of raised uh, portion from the deck level. Obviously that's to keep water out, uh, keep water from coming into the cabin. Um, and then let's, let's get in here and focus on the helm. Before I get there, another nice, neat little storage area. One, two, three spots there. We've got our light switches just here and this, this one is open. Um, and then we've just got to appreciate this helm. Um, a lot of similarities to the T11 in terms of the finish and, and the, the, uh, what they've used here. But I guess obviously the big difference is our positioning. So uh, we're favored to starboard rather than uh, being a more of a center console vibe on the T11 and having the vertical glass all around. So I'm, I'm a fan of this because when you see a lot of cabin boats with a, a sloped glass like this, you imagine the heat load on that sports cruiser style sloped glass. It's just epic amount of heat which gets baked up from the sun uh, on those windscreens. So you really do have to put all those uh, covers over them to protect them. Whereas a vertical one like this, it's not gonna cop a lot of sun. So you could just chuck a towel or just a basic cover over your dash. And just in terms of packing the boat up, up at the end of the day or starting your boating at the beginning of the day, it's just less mucking about. You can just get, get onto the boating, the whole reason why you came in the first place. Um, so first thing I need to point out before I get to the helm is these seats. I'm in love. These are awesome. I discovered these during the test drive. They are so luxurious. Like there is suspension seats and then there's these suspension seats. Um, what's the brand? Um, Grammar? Okay, good job guys. They, they're well designed in terms of nobody's gonna get their toes caught in here and accidentally get them chopped up. Um, when you're going, going through some swell, they're quiet. So when you are going through some swell, they really don't make a noticeable noise, but they're just incredibly comfortable. And they do, um, it, it does activate, like, um, it's kind of like, do you remember going to school on the bus and the bus driver would have a seat like this and you'd see him, you know, bouncing his way down the highway, like comfortably. It's kind of like being on a luxury coach. Like, that's how I imagine this is. Anyway. You've got two armrests, you've got your headrest just here, and you really can drive the boat for long distances like this in a comfortable manner with your feet on this footrest or your feet, see my feet are a little bit short, but don't use this as a guide because I've got the world's shortest legs. So normal people would be able to um, re reach that. And, and just basically relax and have your hand on just one hand on the steering wheel, sitting at your 27 knots, 22 knots, and just cruising your way up the bay, like here where you do have some miles to cover. What an amazing, seriously amazing experience. Um, so that's great, love them. We've got a fire extinguisher in between, we've got two footrests just there, and some finished, textured finish, which actually matches the seat. It looks like it's actually the same uh, material. Um, I don't know what these adjustments in the front are for, but this one here, that looks like it actually allows the seat to go forward maybe. Yeah, oh cool, so you can go forward and aft. So it's got that way's adjustment. I don't know what this thing does, I don't wanna play with it because it's, it's new to me. So um, there is some adjustment there. Um, the sunroofs, these are just gonna manually operate like so. And then we've got down lights here and here and speakers there and there. But now let's start on the helm. Over on the starboard side, we've got a handle just here, which is actually conveniently placed. We've got a VHF just down in here, and then the digital throttle on a nice angle relative to the wheel. So I did find that quite comfortable. Um, it's the Volvo, so it's just got all the Volvo gear. Your bow thruster is below, so that's operated with your right hand just here, and then you've just got a power activation. All the Nimbus thrusters, are seriously overpowered. They always overdo it on these boats, which is great. So you don't have anything to worry about there. Um, we've got the Volvo joystick through stern drives. Um, very handy if you're new to boating and uh, can't do all the calculations in your head. 
Um, and you know what? I, I will film a little demonstration back at the marina. We'll probably do that as a separate video, so stay tuned for that. The Humphrey, uh, these are the deflectors, basically kind of like trim tabs, but they deflect instead of uh, go down like tabs. And then they, it, this can be operated manually or in an auto mode like we've got it on today. Um, the wheel, standard Nimbus wheel really, um, attractive, leather wrapped and adjustable. On t in terms of the gauges just here, horn, wiper, uh, wiper wash, wiper port, wiper starboard, um, wiper, wiper, okay, a lot of wipers, nav lights, anchor lights, auxiliary, defrost, wow, I've never seen that before, bilge one and bilge two, oh, so that must blow air at the windscreen, yeah, okay, got it, all right, defrost. Um, cool, and then two Simrad screens just here, um, just regular Simrad screens, multifunction, you can do what you like with them, and on the port side below the switches is our Volvo Penta diagnostics display just there. Um, in terms of putting phones and that sort of thing, you could actually throw one in there if you wanted it right in front of you, that's gonna hinder the access or the visibility of the Humphrey, so the other spot would be in this little area just here. Um, you've got your Fusion, just below that, like so. And then drink holder, drink holder, which would also function as another phone holder as well. Drink holder, drink holder. So a total of four drink holders at the helm. And actually even some spots for uh, phones there as well, should you need. Um, I did mention the footrest. Um, there's two fold down footrests for driver and navigator, but the driver does have the better choice uh, or better option, so to speak, if they're wanting to lean forward because they've got this one to utilize, the Navigator does not. Um, so I think that's the whole cabin there. Let's get up and have a look in the bow before we go downstairs. So, so look at this, in terms of stepping out, step over the little six inches there, and just so much room. It really is a pleasure to converse, move forward and aft on this boat. Um, little thing worth noting, midships cleat, same on the other side, really easy for operating the boat solo at the dock. Um, as you move forward, we step over another beautiful piece of stainless. I'll just get out of the way so you guys can see that. And that also hinges up and gives you access to the fresh water in and also drains water coming off the foredeck through a little drain just there. So it's gonna try and knock some of that down before it goes aft and down onto the main deck there. Another little beautiful finishing uh, tidbit by Nimbus here. So we've got this little teak step. So stepping up onto other boats um, or even stepping off onto marinas through the midships uh, part of the boat, this is going to make it a little bit nicer. And you've also got, or you can utilize this grab handle here. So if you were stepping down like so, and then in, it's going to be quite functional and easy. Um, come on forward, but whilst we're doing it, just look at the beautiful logo in stainless. I love seeing that. So, it's just such good quality. This, this really is, these boats, at the top, top end of the quality spectrum. So, um, everywhere you look, you just, you just get impressed. So, up here on the bow, this is a whole another hangout zone. So, just keep all that in shot there, Ben. I want everyone to, don't get too close just yet. I want them to soak it in, uh, in terms of the space. So, I'm just going to sit here. You can see this, um, this is on the T11 as well. You can see this bow rail is designed in such a way that it's a nice backrest. So this area here, it becomes a social area for people to converse because you've got two bases here, which are clearly for a picnic table. So this is another little lunch or picnic spot. This would be a perfect sunset drinks spot. It would be absolutely gorgeous for that. And also, having the opening at the bow, like so, and the design of this boat, where the anchor doesn't protrude forward of this bumper rail, means that you can go into fixed docks and board people on and off the bow, so that the skipper's gonna have really, really good visibility and control with the bow thruster to just hold the bow in position and people can get on and off um, if that's required. So uh, before I show you this, let me just feel this out. Super comfortable, high quality, thick foam. You could sit here all day. That's just, just great. In terms of the space, let's get the sun lounge. Oh. oh, yeah. Imagine sleeping here under the stars. Like, you'd get the whole Milky Way down here. There's no towns to speak of, so there'd be no light pollution. But what an amazing thing to do. I mean, 
That's why you buy boats, hey? So, yes, that's all good. And the other thing um, I can see, you've got zippers here and here holding it in place. So you can go at speed. We did almost 40 knots today with these motors and they're not going to blow away. Um, but I can also see facility for a cover that's gonna go over all these. So you don't have to be taking the cushions off uh, every time you use the boat, which can be a bit, bit annoying. Um, so there is access down below. So this here opens and that's really just for, it'd be an emergency exit. It'd be a, somewhere to throw gear bags if you didn't want to go down through the main cabin, but it's also just ventilation. So on a hot night, if you're sleeping down there and you need to get some air through the cabin, that's another option. Um, by the way, I didn't point it out as we moved our way forward. I've just walked past one, two, three, four, five, six courtesy lights on the deck. So they go all the way from the bow to the stern and they will illuminate uh, facing down. And then up here, we've got two large fusion speakers as well. And once again, beautifully finished anchor locker. So I've got a stainless steel Lumar winch that's just got all chain on it. And we've got quite a lot of chain out, as you can see, because it goes from deep, very deep actually, to shallow. We can operate that from the helm, but we also have, or, or via remote control, I should say, but we also have uh, operation from here. There's the gas storage, so I was wrong. The gas is in the bow, that makes sense because it's a ventilated locker like so. And then look at that, one, two, three storage for some more ropes, which is really cool to see as well. A um, little bit of storage for something else too. So that's great. Let's go downstairs and have a look at the cabin. Okay, so um, the access through the helm, pretty easy. If you need more space, you could open that up. But um, to enter the cabin, you've got a, a, a quite a heavy sliding perspex door with a lock and a handle here. That does not feel like it's going to move um, underway. Actually, it even has another little stopper. So then you have these um, offset stairs. So you go right, left, right, and there's space saving stairs. I saw them on the last Nimbus, quite a clever design. Oh, and this one. So this one has got a different layout to the T11 that we've already seen, which is quite logical because you're gonna use this boat as a bit more of an overnighter. So um, I'll just kind of take you through this before we go through the rest of the cabin. Um, got a fridge. Vera Frigo, don't know that brand, but it looks good. Um, and then I've got, all right, I've got all my batteries just here. Gas detector, water, Wabasto. Is that a heater? No, I've never used a boat heater before. I'm gonna try that later on. Um, and then fuses. Um, you've got some storage underneath these stairs, shallow and then a deeper one uh, with their own lights. And then you've got your light switches just here. And then we get to quite a neat little galley setup. So um, yeah, this is cool. We've got a stainless steel, uh, two stainless steel sinks here and here, and then a two burner sole gas. So that must be gas in uh, some random, oh no, it's in English, connect, yep, connect the gas. So it's definitely gas. Um, we got the deep storage behind here. I saw that on the T11. So you could put larger items or you know your laptop bags and that sort of stuff behind there. What do we have here? 240, just here. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and then quite deep and functional galley storage here. So remember, we've all, already got all of our cutlery um, upstairs. Whoop, I might just turn that on. Um, and so this is gonna be good for all your other items. You could have serving platters, cutting boards, those sorts of things down here. You can have cleaning gear and all your food will actually store quite nicely uh, down here as well. That's your dry food and obviously your cold stuff will go in the fridge. Um, we've got, as you move forward, we'll just cover this area before we get into the other cabin. You've got nice leather finished roof all around here. So this is all quite well finished. And then here we've got the textured fiberglass. So that's, um, that's quite a nice touch because it all goes really well with the roof the material finish here, the textured fiberglass, and then this this is like a light oak compared to the other one, which had more of a teak uh, interior finish. So this actually makes it feel um, probably a little bit bigger, this one, because of the lighter color, I feel. Um, but you've got a seat just here, so you can sit here quite comfortably, put your shoes on, that sort of thing. That must be the, the heater vent just there. Um, you've got the Nimbus 
cushions just up here and looks like the owner's obviously added some extra uh, extra cushion to that, but let's try it out. Um, I think you're gonna sleep this way. Oh wow, look at that view out these windows. That's epic. See, that's why they do windows like that. It's just like right away, I can just see the benefit of that. But in terms of space, I think this is for the shorter person because you've got a little bit more length on the port side for a tall person. But now, okay, my feet are now on the end. I'm 5'7", and I've still got a decent amount of space there. And my arms, you know, not even really crossing the center line. So big blokes will still be okay. If the girl's a little bit smaller, she might find this, uh, or it just might be a bit more practical to have her on this side. Um, then you each have a ledge just here, which will be great for all your bits and pieces. I can see the blind. There's actually two blinds that meet in the middle. So if you were worried about privacy at the marina, that's uh, resolvable. You've each got a reading light up this end. So it definitely is this end because you've got a reading light on either side. And I can also see one, two, three, four down lights. I'm not sure where the switch is for that, but um, that is there as well. And then I can see a ledge here and here. So you might have your books and that sort of stuff um, stowed away there for occasional use. A uh, hook here and here, which will be good for a beach towel or, or hanging jackets. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four um, shelves just in here for storage. So that's a good place to you know roll up uh, your shorts and roll up your t-shirts and just have like you know shirts, t-shirts, shorts, pants kind of thing all arranged just there. Fire extinguisher under there, but you could also put a couple of shoes in there if you need it. Um, and look, this will actually work as a cabin too because you've got this uh, curtain. So you can actually set this across for some privacy. Um, although I wouldn't have that closed when I'm cooking on the stove. That'd be uh, not very practical. So let's get into the loo. So yeah, this is what I remember on the other boat to be fair. You've got this fantastic fixed shower screen incorporated with the toilet. So you can do the whole sit down shower thing because you have got this uh, proper seat which goes over the loo. So if you were doing a sit down shower, the loo will stay dry, um, but you can also do a stand up shower. I think, you know what? Yeah, you've just got enough room, like for average size people to still do a stand up shower. I would probably face this direction. Um, and then you can have your shower. You've got your hot and cold mixers just here and here. And the loo roll holder will actually close and protect the dunny roll from getting wet. And then the toilet is electric operated with two switches just there and there. And then you've got your tank. Uh, tank. Yeah, it looks like you can evacuate the holding tank from here as well. Big mirror, that looks fixed. We've got some storage behind here. That's going to be good for all your soaps and shampoos and bits and pieces. Um, this mirror carries across to the other side. This is Perspex. Looks like glass, but it's Perspex. Oh, you've got a deck vent just here, so that's great. So that's actually, um, I can feel some air coming through there right now. So that's going to keep this area nice and fresh all the time. Um, and then, yeah, nice. What's the materials? That's just Perspex, actually. It feels good. Um, Easy access to all the plumbing, storage for cleaning gear, nice single stainless steel sink, hot and cold mixer tap. You could put all your fancy soaps or your little dressy bathroom things behind there just to make the bathroom look cool. And then uh, this stainless steel rail is actually a good grab hold if the boat was rocking around. Two shower hooks just there. So I'm gonna go this way. So you just stay there, Ben. Before I do, just make sure everyone can see these stairs that I was talking about before and the storage below, that's pretty neat. That, that actually wouldn't be a bad spot for um, safety grab bags or, or like, uh, you know, just flares or EPIRBs, that sort of stuff, because it's easily accessible and close to the helm and it's gonna stay there. So this is the, um, I'm not sure if this is the guest or the master accommodation, because it's pretty good. So, oh, oh no, yeah, okay, right. Um, so come in and have a look. You got your big stand up mirror. You got your sit down seat, just like the other one. Got a little plug just here. Got a bit of storage behind here. That's actually a nice, decent amount of storage uh, behind there. Little ledge there. Two reading lights. And it's one of these ones where you slide in like so. Um, and you know what? You don't like, you don't feel claustrophobic. Some people might be funny with this. I can 
roll over. So two people are going to be okay. Uh, but yeah, like no funny business down here because you, you might run out of space. But whilst I'm down here, I've got one opening locker just here on starboard and then access into the equipment room on port. So that gets you into a lot of the electrical elements in the boat just there. Um, and you do see some backlighting and a soft backboard uh, at the rear side of the bed. Okay, so access to the engine bay is really easy. You've just got one, two, three latches. You open them up and the, uh, the whole thing just comes uh, up on this big gas strut just here. Um, we've got the D4-320s, two of them, stern drives, a really well insulated engine bay, good insulation here and forward as well. Uh, but just starting from starboard and making my way around, I've got my hydraulics for the steering, I got my filters for the fuel, I got my wiring loom going forward and aft, I got a blower down here as well, and then steering hydraulics for the port motor just there. And as you can see, I'm on this checker plate just here, which makes life a little bit easier for the mechanics. So, is this an all weather weekender? Absolutely yes. Um, who's it suitable for? Definitely couples. Uh, older couples would be happy with this. If you've been through a few boats and you, you, know, you might've come from sailing yachts or larger cruises and you just wanna simplify your life, you will be really happy with a boat like this. Um, if you've got kids, completely doable, probably better for colder climates, this particular layout, because it does limit your zones, your usable zones, um, into one, two, three, and then downstairs, as opposed to the T11, which is a bit more open. Um, but yeah, if you're someone who needs to travel as well, this boat is just going to be an absolute delight. With this engine set up, with that interior layout, you know, cruising in a place like this, is gonna be pretty epic. Anyway, doesn't end there. If you wanna see the test drive on this boat, follow the link that's coming up in your screen now. If you wanna have a look at the T11, that's gonna be coming up as well. My name's Dan Jones, this has been Dan's Boat Life. See you on the next one.